Welcome to Youth in Action, where young people are realizing their dreams like never before. In today's program, we have a young engineer and CEO of Elrad Investments, Elvis Omondi. Elvis, karibu sana. Thank you, Granny. So tell Thank us you. Uh, about yourself. What do you do? Who are you? Thank you. Uh, I am Elvis Omondi Alwala, a uh, graduate engineer, uh, registered with Engineers Board of Kenya in that level and also a member of the institution of engineers of kenya i'm also a member of uh, the, the future leaders Forum, uh, that is the association of consulting engineers of kenya um i'm a graduate engineer in the field of civil and structural engineering i'm a resident of kakamega and i'm so happy to be here uh, to share with you my journey interesting <coughs> I love the fact that you've mentioned uh, the Kenya uh, Engineers Board of Kenya, the Institution of Engineers of Kenya, and Association of Consulting Engineers. Why did you feel the need to mention them? Um, these are regulatory bodies, mm -hmm. and some are uh, associations. Uh, EBK is basically the Engineers Board of Kenya, the regulatory bodies, and uh, it categorizes engineers according to their years of experience uh, and. Uh, the most basic one is uh, the, the entry level, uh, the graduate engineer, that is basically after your five year or four year course. Mm -hmm. uh, and then now uh, you transition to uh, being a professional. You transition to, after being a professional, you may transition to be a consulting engineer, which is the highest in that order. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's uh, basically important to be in these organizations uh, because they regulate your your practice and they allow you and uh, recognize you as a person. It's important as young engineers and uh, young professionals to be involved in activities of such organizations uh, so that uh, you may be able to grow professionally in uh, those levels. Interesting. So everyone has a dream. I too had a dream of being a doctor in life, but it, I didn't meet that dream. So yes. what is your dream and have you met it? My dream has always been to be an engineer. And I remember in Form 2, uh, you see the lockers that we have, eh? the front of my locker indicated that I'm a future engineer. And I think uh, the moment I stepped into engineering school, I've met my dream. Wow. Yes. That is a true success story. Yes, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, true, true. So take us through your engineering journey. You've, you've told us about the memberships uh, that yes. you're part of, but how did you start? Um, just like a normal Kenyan, I went through the 844 system. Uh, I studied in, uh, born and raised in Migori, studied in Migori Primary, went to Migori Secondary School. And then I got a call up to join Masinde Muliro University of Science and Technology mm -hmm. to study civil and structural engineering, which is a five year course. Uh, I graduated in 2020 and I joined the field, of course, through uh, mentors uh, because uh, this is a very dynamic field. Mm -hmm. uh, because, for example, in civil engineering, we have uh, a wide area of practice we have water engineering highway engineering uh, the structure engineering that now deals with the structures houses which i'm basically in so after college uh, just like a normal young man was walking up and down looking for where to start but i met some young people with the same uh, vision so that's where i started learning uh, the basics of engineering uh, what to do, what not to do. And it's important to note as a young engineer, when you're from school, uh, you'll be required to be under a professional. A professional engineer is someone who is registered uh, by the Engineers Board of Kenya and is given powers to practice as an engineer. So as a young person, as a graduate, you have to look for such a person. 
to guide you and help you uh, grow so that you may also be able to transition from the graduate level to the professional level. And that's how I got myself into this noble field. <laughs> wow. Yes. You're calling it noble. Some of us appreciate engineers <laughs> like uh, they're way above this. <laughs> <laughs> the steps but uh, that is a true transition story yes, yes. speaking of transition what prompted the decision to start your own investment company Elvad? um uh, funny enough i had uh, this dream when i was still in college because uh, as a young man i used to meet people that are in the same field uh, you go to a construction site you meet contractors you you also meet engineers that they come to site to give instructions, so you get interested in whatever they do. So I saw it fit uh, to also join uh, uh, these guys in doing whatever they do. So while I was in college, I could still follow up uh, and I could still do some little assignments that were assigned to me by uh, the registered engineers. And I remember I did my first drawing uh, for a client uh, that is a private job. Uh, when I was in uh, third year. That was basically not so much engineering, eh? that was so much uh, in uh, the architectural part of it. But uh, this now started exposing me to what engineering is basically about. Because engineering now, we also uh, try to, actually we work hand in hand with architects. Eh? So if you also understand the architectural field, the way it operates, uh, you end up also appreciating their value. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's how I found uh, the urge to come up with something. Uh, I'm somebody who wants to study each and every day. So I went to online portal and tried to look at how somebody would start up a company or a business name. And that's how I came up with a, a business name. I started my company. Uh, it's, it's, it, was, it was rough at the start, uh, but I think we are sailing through. Oh. Yes. You've spoken about exposure while yes. still in college. Yes, yes. How significant is that towards progressing in your careers? Because most students think that I will study, finish my exams, and then outside it will be a walk in the park. No, it's not a walk in the park. Uh -huh. you, you have to be smart. Uh, there's a, a street saying that you have to be book smart and street smart as well. Now the street, mat, street smart part of it comes in when you when you go to your first attachment. You're going to meet people that are, are, are basically doing the same thing that you're studying. Now this is where you start creating your first uh, uh, connections. This is where you start creating friendships. Because uh, in this field it's basically about friendships and connections. So uh, maybe I will advise young men that are coming up is uh, uh, the moment you get into your first attachment, that's where you're going to get your first connection. Mm -hmm. So when you get to your attachment, you don't just go to the attachment and uh, finish your maybe eight or nine weeks of attachment and come back to school thinking that, uh, thinking that after graduation, you're going to apply for jobs and not get them. Oh. Yes, yes. And so what activities do you do at Elrad Investments? Um, we deal with designs of buildings, uh, structural design to be precise. Uh, structural design is, um, is uh, maybe, if I will explain in a layman way, is to, if, if for example you're my client, mm -hmm. you already have approached an architect to do for you an architectural drawing. You want to do a residential apartment, maybe three suspended floors. Now you already have the architect and the architect has given you a concept and you have accepted the concept and it's, it has been drawn. Now it's upon us to come and come up with the design. Uh, we look at your, your, the architectural drawing. We come up with the uh, structural drawing. Structural drawings uh, especially, especially gives you details of steel, uh, concrete, uh, what class, what type, what type of steel, the size, the spacing, uh, uh, what, is, what are you going to use in the foundation, such things. So that uh, you don't go in blankly uh, without knowing uh, what it entails. Mm -hmm. So that is what we do. We come up with the details, the structural details of your building.
so that uh, it is safe and sound. Okay. So, Structural uh, details of the building, yeah. Yes, yes. And we've seen recent uh, issues of building collapse, buildings collapsing. Yes. Is it a structural issue, or there's something else to add on? Um, I don't think it's a structural issue uh -huh. because I believe our engineers are competent enough. Okay. I think it's a regulatory issue of which the, relation, the regula regulations are, already, are there already. Um, I'll give an example. An example is where an engineer, you, you're the client and you told the engineer you want a three-story building. The engineer designs in mind that you, have, you want a three-story building. That's basically what you design. Mm -hmm. And we'll design to, to a safety of three-story. And basically as a client, maybe you might intend to, to look for services of the engineer thereafter, to come and supervise whatever you have drawn, because uh, you also have to come and see if whatever your drone is being implemented the way you uh, intended it to be implemented. So the engineer supervised your building up to the third uh, story, as you'd agreed. But then you feel that uh, maybe I've gotten some money. Now you want to add two extra floors without knowledge of the engineer. Mm -hmm. And having in mind that you told the engineer from the concept stage that you want a three-story and you're not going to add any more. Now, because uh, maybe your fundi has advised you that uh, these engineers, maybe they don't know these things, we've done this before somewhere. Mm -hmm. If you add two extra floors, it's very safe. Now, the engineer withdraws, because if you cannot follow the, the advice, we withdraw. So if the engineer has withdrawn from your project and then you decide to to proceed with three or four stories uh, more from uh, the initial three stories that you desired. Basically, that weight is going to exceed the bearing capacity, initial that was the, the initial plan that was designed for it. Mm -hmm. uh, that will be one cause of collapse. And uh, another cause might be, we sometimes the clients uh, will totally ignore the professionals. Uh, so if you totally ignore the professionals, there's nothing that, that there's nothing good that is going to come from it. If you want to do a seven story and you've ignored a professional, you've just uh, picked a contractor, uh, I don't think there's anything good. Because um, a contractor is a businessman. A contractor is profit oriented. An engineer is a professional. A professional will put his ethics first. So my ethics before I make money. So if you tell me I want to add two extra floors and I had already designed for three, no matter how much you're going to pay, my ethics will come first. But a contractor will be interested in money. And mostly they'll get away with it. And mostly contractors will get away with it. But if you're an engineer and a mistake happens, you'll never get away with it. It will follow you forever. Mm. And uh, maybe uh, the National Construction Authority that oversees constructions, I think they also need to regulate um, the contractors because uh, I feel nowadays anybody else could just come up and register a company and they become a contractor. So I feel uh, it should be a requirement that uh, not just on paper but on the ground a contractor should love a professional. And we hope that the mentality that you have will yes. be pushed towards you know yes. a broader audience yes, and yes. into the future will not have such yes. cases. Yes. And uh, so what about the mixture, the consistency of the cement, the rocks and the ETC? I'm not sure what materials are needed. So does it also contribute to the collapse if it's not in the right consistency? Yeah, it's called concrete. Eh? Yeah. It's a mixture of cement, uh, sand and ballast. Ballast is what we call kokoto, mm -hmm. the, the local language. Now, uh, I told you as we design, we give uh, specifics. So for a given building, uh, you'll, you'll see an engineer has indicated we need class 20 of concrete. Uh, class 20 uh, basically will tell you the, basic, the, the, the ratio that is, that is required. Now when it, ca it comes to concrete, uh, you find that the, most, the, the biggest mistake that people do is uh, the mix is not regulated or you're not following what was designed for. The engineer might have designed for class 25 but you, you, you use class 20 to save on cement or something. So, basing the knowledge that you have, what would you say has been uh, pushing you towards ensuring that your, uh, your company is successful? We are in a, a very competitive uh, world and 
engineering is also competitive and there's a lot of technology coming up. So what we makes us uh, basically want to succeed is uh, trying to advise clients on technology, uh, trying to advise clients on how you can save money. Uh, you know, uh, what we're interested mostly in is, uh, what my, the client must be interested in is, uh, most of the time is, how am I going to save money if I do this project and how is my project going to be safe at the same time um, saving money. So I think that's where we come in and that's maybe why most of the clients ma might refer us uh, uh, to maybe the older guys. Eh? We are trying to, uh, to, to embrace technology and advice on technology. And also, you know, as a young person, when a technology comes up, you really try as much as you can to, <laughs> yeah, you to want to know what it's about, uh, where does it fail, mm -hmm. and how does it compare to the, the nominal thing that we've been doing. So uh, we also try to compete and, and we try to, to advise on technology and that is how we compete. Wow. And that's how we sustain our, our small company. That's a smart decision, yeah? Yes, yes. So you offer employment to other young people. What yes. significance does this action have in the growing economy where employment and cost of living is a major issue? Yeah, it's uh, really satisfying uh, to have young people besides you that look up to you. Uh, you know, you're also young, but you also have some other people that think you you're really great, it, it pushes you and it makes you feel that you're achieving something. And, uh, you know, when somebody takes uh, some food home, uh, courtesy of your, your work, it, it feels great. So it's really satisfying. And very yeah. selfless. Yes, yes. Yeah. So what challenges have you encountered through your journey and how did you manage as an engineer and a CEO? Yeah, challenges are always there and they'll remain to be there. Uh, the most significant one is um, uh, the people that we have or the clients that we en encounter. Uh, you remember we are in the western part of Kenya. Mm -hmm. So the clients that we encounter, basically, you find that most of them have not embraced the professionalism part of it. You might uh, tell a client that for this particular job we need this amount of money. And then a client will tell you, uh, you need that amount of money just to draw lines and <laughs> tell me what I need to do. So these are challenges that we meet, uh, but uh, we have always tried to explain to people, uh, try to drive the professional point of, uh, the professional part of it, so that uh, someone understands that uh, you really need professionals uh, because um, you know as time changes, uh, we also have the dynamic changes in the environment. Uh, what used to be a stable ground in the last uh, maybe 20 years ago is no longer stable because of uh, the activities that we have. Uh, so it is of importance to engage a professional and sometimes the professional fees might be high but uh, once you understand the importance of engaging a professional uh, it might save you a lot uh, because uh, if, if uh, a professional will tell you a given figure and you feel it's high and you proceed to do something without the professional and then now your building collapses. You, you lose a lot more than you could have uh, given the professional and maybe you'll end up going to court and the court process might also might, might also eat a lot. And, <laughs> and you know, our, uh, the other side, our learned friends, uh, they, they tend not to bargain. Uh, but for us, maybe we we can begin uh, a little bit to make sure that uh, you're safe. Okay. <laughs> Aside from the challenges, what have be, has been your greatest achievement in this journey? My greatest achievement is it feels good to to design a house and it feels good to supervise to completion. And the greatest thing is to feel it feels good to see people live in something that you designed. It feels great. Wow. Yeah. It feels great. Yeah. Could you great. maybe pinpoint an example of a building that we can walk around and see that is his? Yeah, there, there are quite a lot in town. Uh -huh. um, uh, Ketia Supermarket. There's a new Ketia Supermarket in town. It sits on uh, our design. And we have uh, several uh, apartments that we also did the structural design and supervised. And it's habitable. Mm. And it is safe. 
it's also important to note that it's also safe. It's safe. Yes. So where can one acquire your services if I need services from you? Mm, you've not uh, uh, gone the social media way because we believe uh, there's one thing that my senior told me that the engineering profession advertises itself. Uh, once you do something good, uh, clients will come to you. So basically, we've not gone the advertising way. But we have physical offices. Um, I also work with a consulting firm, Level Infrastructure Consulting Engineers. It's a registered uh, consulting firm, a civil engineering consulting firm. Uh, our offices are located in Kisumu, uh, Excel Trading Center, just behind um, Telecom Plaza. Mm -hmm. uh, first floor, office number uh, uh, A9. And maybe contacts of the office will be uh, 07. 83 uh, 09 five, five, zero, zero. Uh, You'll find us uh, uh, through that number. And uh, our physical offices in Kakamega are located at uh, Senji House, uh, that is uh, opposite uh, Ambere Towers, uh, second floor, wing B, office number 311. Yes. So, to just finish, what advice do you have for a young person who started their own thing? but uh, they are facing challenges and uh, maybe they are impatient of the results and the profits and they feel like they need to quit or they want to quit. Uh, quitting is never an option. Mm. Once you start something, if it's your dream, you'll never quit. And no matter how tough it's going to be. So uh, young people out there that are really trying, uh, I know I've met young people that are really trying, uh, the results are not going to be instant. Uh, you're not going to see the results. It's a transition process. You're going to start from somewhere. And uh, what I would really advise uh, my fellow young people is never give up. Push it, push and push. And as you push, uh, make sure you have somebody that holds your hand, somebody that has been in that field, or somebody that you see has succeeded in that field that can guide you. Because these things, there's nobody who was born knowing these things. So we learn from those that were before us. And it is also good to know that in Kenya we have so many people that are willing to help. But only if you approach them. Uh, the problem with young people is uh, maybe we don't want to approach those that have, those that have made it. Um, I don't think if you approach someone that has really made it in, in the profession that you really want to be in, they'll push you away. Uh, there's nobody that's going to push you away. And especially in, in engineering, I've never seen a selfish engineer. Uh, we, we always look, uh, look up to each other and uh, we try to build each other. So if you have a startup, you have a small company, push it, push it and push it and make sure you follow regulations of the government um, so that it will help you in future. You know, the government maybe sets up some regulations, uh, you have to have this and this to set up a given company. You have to do this after end of the year. You make sure you push uh, uh, and achieve such. Uh, this will be very important as you grow your company. Thank you so much, Elvis. I have learned a lot just by sitting with you. And I am sure out there you have learned a lot as well. As he has said, quitting is not an option. And don't let fear guide you towards failure. Find the mentors. Be brave enough to look for them. If you have your company, do not be impatient. Go for what you need and your dream is just behind that door. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangweso Grenis. See you next time. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it.